Taya Gill is a Canadian actress best known for her starring role as Lindsay Peterson on the hit Showtime show Queer as Folk. She also appeared in The Mulligans and 10 episodes of the Here Network original series Dante's Cove, billed as a special guest star in the role of Diana Childs. And in addition to acting, Taya is also a talented jazz singer and now lives in Los Angeles after moving from Canada. First of all, nice to see you. Hello, mate. You moved from Canada to LA. Yes. Just before we get into what you've done, what's the difference in, in living? You know, how, have you, how have you adjusted? Because it's, it's a different city, different way of life here. It is a city where the industry rules mm. uh, and uh, reigns supreme. Um, but uh, it's also the largest city I've ever lived in. Mm. So there comes a lot of uh, lessons and just getting on mm. in, a, in a huge, uh, you know, city like Los Angeles where uh, you have to learn how to drive down the freeways and not get into a car accident and not, <laughs> not wreck yourself up and get to your, you know, get to your meetings on time and it's, it's a, it is a, it's a machine in a sense, but it's a beautiful machine. Um, Important for your career? Yes, yes. So you couldn't do it from Canada? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to uh, spend, you know, time and work in both countries. Uh, you know, I often go back to uh, Victoria, British Columbia, and Vancouver Island, uh, and I, I work there, and I, I, I also work here. So um, I'm finding that, uh, you know, as an actor, you have to be nomadic. You know, you have to, you have to seek out work in, in, in many areas, and in and in many countries, and, and it's an adventure. Queer as folk, it's, it just seems offset to, be, to have been a great, like a happy set, happy family. Yes. Is that how it was? Oh, it was, absolutely. I, I still consider all those I worked with to be my family mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to be another uh, family in my life. Mm -hmm. um, we have many families in our lives, right? And. Uh, I, I have remained friends with practically everyone, um, and I work out at the gym with uh, the executive producers Dan Lipman and Ron Cowan, and you know we're on the treadmill together, and family follows each other. So, how long have you been acting for? I have always wanted to be an actress since I was 12 years old, uh, when I played Scrooge in A Christmas Carol, and in my grade five. Uh, <laughs> elementary school production. Mm. I've tried to find my way mm. uh, as an actress. I work in the stage, I work mm. in the theater, uh, I have worked in television, I'm working more in, in feature film and uh, and I'm, I'm trying to continue to pursue uh, all kinds of different expressions and mm. in, in, in the various mediums that one can as an actress. What do you prefer? on stage, in theatre, or do you prefer on film? I mean, both are entirely different. I mean, yes. you, can, you can mess up a line yes. in front of the camera. I would be so fearful, so scared, that I'm going to forget my lines. So do you have that sort of fear and, and the difference between on stage and in front of the camera? What is the difference and what fears do you have? Or do you have any fears, like the mental block? Oh, fears? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's funny, everyone, uh, um, who doesn't work in in the entertainment mm. field always asks you know how how do you memorize all those lines that's always the number one question mm. people ask and it's actually the um, you know the the least difficult thing to do mm -hmm. is memorize the lines uh, uh, but um, I, I I need a dose of of each I need uh, to be on stage uh, every once in a while mm -hmm. I need to um, receive uh, the, the live interaction or the, the energy, the, the creativity, the, uh, you know, the different um, colors that uh, one experiences when one's on stage because it's a, a live thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also um, have become uh, more and more intrigued by the camera and uh, the mysteries and, and the secrets that uh, the camera uh, holds mm -hmm. uh, and how one can communicate uh, through the lens. Uh, on stage, I go deeper into my, um, my body, uh, whereas in, in film, I, I find that I go deeper into, into my soul as an actress. So I'm, I'm, I'm finding the different ways in which now I can bring what I've learned 
through through my film and television acting, how can I influence my stage acting, and how can my stage acting influence my my television and film acting? Because they do complement each other mm -hmm. if one's able to find the holistic nature of 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 what one's doing. And the live aspect to being on stage compared to, say, in front of a, a camera. I mean, with a camera, you have to wait for a long, long time before you actually get to that stage of finding the reaction of the audience. But on stage, it's pretty well instant, isn't it? I mean, you, it's, it's there ready to, they either like you or they don't. How do you, I mean, do you... Yes, that's true. Do you, do you look for the, the, the blessing of the audience, the, uh, or what, what do you look for from, from the audience? I mean, because it's so instant. Yes. Well, you know, um, my, my husband's always said that um, he, he, he feels I'm, I'm most uh, alive when I'm, I'm acting on, on stage, when I'm, I'm working with him on a play, when I'm entering into a, a character uh, on stage, or when I'm performing on stage uh, throughout the course of a run of a play. And, um, and I, I've always wondered what he meant by that, because I don't, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I'm not sure I... I, I know what that is, other than um, you are living in time, in the time of the moment. Uh, but I, I like uh, I like the idea of the timelessness of film uh, and um, how you can take your time and how how you can stop and you can start again and you can you can say a word. Um, in a scene, um, you know, ten times or how many times you need to, and you know, the editor, the director will choose the take that will fit the story in which she wants to she wants to tell. But for the actor, for the process of the actor, for me, I find that the repetition of the word uh, resonates for me, and that creative process is is what I mean by. The process of the lens deepening the soul. I still go back to this live thing because you're also a jazz singer. Yes. And, and, but and you're a good jazz singer. You got a great voice. Thank you. But the the live thing again. I mean, you're in front of a live audience. Yes. Oh, yes. So how do you find singing in front of an audience? Oh, do you I, have I, butterflies? And I, I have been petrified. I have I have been scared to death. Um, the idea of singing uh, stops my heart from beating. <laughs> uh, although I'm, 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 I'm not going to let it mm. kill me, uh, because I, I know that there is a reason why I have to, I have to sing. Mm. Uh, but it is, it is, um, it is the one thing as a performer that mm. makes me uh, uh, so terribly, terribly nervous. Mm. And um, uh, and when I when I sing on my own, it's it's a uh, it's 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 uplifting and it's it's a joy. So now my challenge, of course, is to be able to bring the privacy of my singing to the public, and um, and that has still yet to to happen for me. When did you realize that you had a good voice? That you and and jazz. When did you realize that this was the area of performing with music? Well, you know, I I, I don't know if I'm. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a jazz singer. I, I, I mean, talking about time, I, I, I still actually am searching for, for exploring different time signatures and, yeah. and time beats and, and you know and, 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 and finding the rhythm yeah. uh, of, of, of songs and yeah. you know I, I um, you know playing around with time, you know. Because um, jazz singing is very sexy, though, isn't it? I mean, it is sexy jazz. What I'm intrigued by are the are the the ballads, you know the, uh, you know the the love songs and uh, and and how one can express uh, the pain and, and and the joy of love through melody mm. and through rhythm and through timing, mm. and I think that that's that's where I want to start telling stories. Mm. I always love to sing, um, and it's interesting because uh, when I was uh, very young, around seven or eight or nine years old, um, I would be playing the piano and I would be singing along with the piano. And my mother, I always would um, comment on how she believed that I should be a singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, of course, rejected that idea and said, no, no, I was going to be an actress. But um, 
but maybe she was right. Maybe I should have focused more on singing. But I think now I'm at that point in my life where now I can, I'm in a nice place where I can combine the two. Okay, where do you see yourself going? What's, what, what would you like to do in the next, say, say five or ten years? Because you are an entertainer, aren't you? You are. You're not just an actor. You're an entertainer. I suppose. I, you know, I've been trying to figure it out. I think my journey to Los Angeles has has opened up all these doors and all these questions about what is it that I want to do. Uh, yes, I have had a career as an actress. Now I'm singing, and I have sung, and I've been encouraged to continue singing. And uh, there's a personal um, search that I'm doing with my singing, and I'm at that place right now where I, I just don't know. What should I focus on first? You know, what should I, what should I do now? Um, there are so many different roads I could take, and so it's a journey of discovery, isn't it? It is. It, this is the biggest journey of discovery um, that I've ever had in my life, um, and I, I think that does tie into you know, moving, or you know, at least spending a lot of my time in the largest city that I've ever lived in. It's all big. It's all large. It's all huge. It's all. So what have you discovered, though, about yourself that you didn't know? What have you seen about yourself? I think I've grown later in life. I, I, uh, when we feel we're going backwards, we're going forwards. Uh, I think I realize now um, that Taya before, or a few years ago, before these discoveries occurred or these transitions happened, um, was really um, quite um, naive and and uh, and beautifully vulnerable and uh, and and youthful and childlike. Uh, and I don't think I'll ever uh, ever want to lose those those qualities in myself. But what I've been woken up to, what I've awakened to in myself is that I have an incredible amount of energy and I have an incredible amount of knowledge uh, that my naivete uh, disguised and the disguise is dropping now and so I'm realizing that I have an incredible amount of power uh, that I, I hid from myself and that comes with age and experience and uh, I think when one is forced into or, 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 or f one falls into, a, um, into an area of one's life where one know, knows no answers, um, you unravel and, and like a butterfly, you emerge. And that's really what this year has been about and it's been glorious. Uh, I, I, I feel I've reached um, higher spheres within myself and it's a great feeling to know that you can fly. If you had a group of, so all your friends from school, your work friends, people who just met and they're all surrounding you, looking at you. Oh my God. I know, and you're all sitting on this, this uh, couch here <laughs> and they're all, and, and they've all asked you the same question, just in one word, that question. Who is Taya? <laughs> oh, I, I, it's, one part of me wants to say the rebel, the other part wants to say the lover. It's like the rebel and the lover. That's two words. We, 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 we need one word. <laughs> the rebel lover. The rebel, that's <laughs> With a rebel, yeah. <laughs> Billy. Love. But one word. Crazy? <laughs> I don't, I, it, lover. I'll always, I'll always be the lover. I'll always choose the lover. Taya, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, mate. <laughs>